I'm Nelson with Chartrack Insights. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to put what you've learned in the previous two episodes to use for creating your first voyage plan. If you've just hopped in, it's recommended to watch the first two episodes first so that you'll have a better understanding of what we're doing here today. With that being said, let's dive headfirst into creating our first voyage plan. First, Let's go ahead and verify that all vessel parameters have been correctly set up to reflect the dimensions of your ship. Once all is verified, we'll either use a route we have on hand or create one from scratch. In this case, I'll be using one I already have. Having imported my route, I'll go and make sure that some default settings are applied to all the waypoints. I'll do that on page 1 of the ATP panel. Note that the settings we enforce on all waypoints here are defaults. We'll be checking out how to overwrite these defaults in just a bit. Not all fields here are mandatory, as not all of them have a significant impact on the successful creation of a voyage plan. Having input the parameters and set all waypoints, it's time to run the auto validator. What happens when you click on this button is what makes EasyNav so powerful. Not only is it crunching through all the ENC data across your entire route, it's also identifying hazards, calculating clearances based on a wide variety of conditions and parameters, and it's getting prepped to present you with a passage plan ready to sign off on. Imagine the time saved. How long all of this will take largely depends on the number of waypoints your route consists of. Once all waypoints have been validated, you'll see a pop-up window appear, presenting you with all hazards that have been identified on your route. It's up to you to review and decide on corrective actions, if any. Note that you'll be needing some of the skills you've learned in Episode 2, as corrective actions will sometimes involve editing a route. Some of the hazards detected may also have something to do with the default values we've set up at the beginning. Notice how my expected speed is set to 12 knots across my entire voyage. That would quite certainly create dangerous situations in shallow waters, as the dimensions of my ship, its weight, the speed and other parameters will influence how deep she will squat. Decreasing the speed in shallow waters should resolve that for us. This brings us to the next section of today's video, editing waypoints in detail. This follows on editing waypoints of episode 2. To begin, let's first go to page 2 of the A to B panel. For now, let's just select any waypoint in the list and click on its edit button. As an EGDIS user, most of the terminology used ahead should be quite familiar to you. In the first tab, we can find some parameters that can be completed, including the one we're looking for, speed. Let's drop this down to, say, 3 knots. If we then hop over to the UKC tab and hit the Recalculate button, you can already see that the dynamic draft has taken a fall due to my slower sailing here. If we swing over to the Draft tab, we can make ad hoc manual changes to the vessel's draft, which under normal circumstances you won't need to do. There is also a Start Density setting, which basically reflects default water density. You can set up to which degree a vessel would heal throughout this leg, and you can see how deep she will squat given the predefined parameters. And you can change the density for this leg. All of the parameters above use complex mathematical formulas to build a critically important number, the dynamic draft. You'll see it come back when we move on to the UKC tab. As you can see, the dynamic draft is displayed here on the right. Let's remember that in these tabs we're making changes to automatically detected and default values. Only change what you really need to change. If I can clearly observe that a charted depth does not correspond with what I see in the real world, let's say a charted depth of 2 meters at open sea, I could override that setting here to avoid an alarm in my upcoming passage plan. Note that this doesn't waive any legal obligation to report discrepancies between ENC data and real world observations. The expected tide section is again a way to manually manipulate values. If you have a valid Admiralty Total Tide license, these numbers will be picked up for you there. Manually changing the squat depth should also not be needed, nor should the UKC. You might want to set the water type and a company UKC policy that applies to your situation. Again, this overrides values set elsewhere. To better understand this, let's quickly pop out to page 4 of the A to B panel. 
At the top of the screen, some standard options to include in the auto-validation process, some secondary options to consider, and lastly, the UKC policy settings. On popular demand, the addition of these settings have made EasyNav more flexible to use within an existing set of policies. Lastly, on our waypoint, we can review whichever hazard was identified, in my case I am sailing by a pearl farm, and decide what to do about it. Next, the checklists. As with any passage plan, this one has a number of mandatory and predefined checklist items to cross. Both appraisal and planning checklists must be completed prior to being signed and approved at the bottom of the screen. At the top of the screen, you'll see that the plan is now in monitoring phase, meaning ongoing. So that's it, we've done the hard work. Now let's click on the Generate Report button, which is on page 5 of the ATB panel, and let EasyNav do the rest. Not much later, the entire voyage plan is presented to you. All of the what's and how's are included. You can make particularly good use of the UKC table, which indicates that my vessel is going to have a really hard time here. The charted depth is 30 meters, that's our budget. The dynamic draft under current conditions is 24.7 meters, which leaves us with a little over 5 meters and our UKC must be at least 5.3 meters. Factor in the company policy and our voyage requires 37 meters of depth, which we don't have. This voyage was intended for a cruise liner and not a super tanker. Keep reading through the passage plan to find out tons of information about your voyage. And the last step will be to connect a USB drive to click on the export button to get a PDF version of the plan. That's it for today. Next time, let's talk about instrumentation mode. Thanks for watching.